Welcome back to Getting Started with Windows 2D. This is episode 5. And as promised, I was thinking about introducing, uh, finally introducing the game loop. So I decided first to introduce the game loop. And to have a game loop, we have to introduce a concept of uh, keeping time. So basically, what a game loop is, is um, it keeps time, and if enough time has passed, call the update on the scene and if enough time has passed draw the scene and it will continuously do that and eventually what you get is a, a gaming loop where everything is moving or reacts to user input and it's a central concept and uh, if you have time you probably should watch this episode twice just to make sure you get what I'm doing here okay all right let's get started Let's load in the project files for episode 4. And I think this is the project. So I'm going to make sure by um, seeing what it looks like. And yeah, this is the project for uh, episode 4 because it created a bunch of can years on the screen. Okay. So the idea for this project for episode 5 is to create a, a looping mechanism such that uh, one of the cannoneers uh, will move uh, downward in time so what will happen is let's say we only going to draw one and every second or so it's going to move down uh, in direction because it's, it's getting affected by the change in time Okay, so let's do that First, let's make sure that only one of them shows up. So, here's the f in the create resources where we created 50 of them. Now we created just five. Okay, there's I mean just one. There's the guy right there, and I'm yeah just gonna keep it random for now. So let's um, create a class that keeps track of time. So in your share project, let's add in a new class code in that class and we're going to call this game timer as always change the namespace to triple source or whatever you were using before make this a puppet class now let's think about what we want to do in the game timer here we want to keep track of time time we want to call the update um, X number of times a second. We want to draw the curtain scene uh, X number of times a, a second. And this is called FPS, which, which is frames per second here. And we're going to call this UPS, which is updates per second. Okay. And that's basically all we need to do in the game timer for now. So to keep track of time, we need a bunch of uh, properties, right? So let's make some properties to keep track of time. A One of the very first things when you think about keeping uh, track of time is we have to keep track of the total amount of time the app application has been running, right? So let's do that. We call this total app time. So this is the total time the application has ran. Uh, I would say after it started loading the resources and it's completed. Okay. And of course we have to keep track of time again. So date time. Uh, time span is just basically a. Um, A uh, duration of time uh, that has passed, so that's why we use it. And date time is actually uh, a construct a structure that contains a specific date. So, so we want to add time to it. So that's why we call call time span. And then on this one, I I want to keep track of when the, the last time we called the update. So last update time is a date time. 
and of course since we want to also keep track of when uh, I mean how many times we draw a second we want to keep track of the last time we called draw as well so there you go last draw time <laughs> okay okay now um, we need some type of uh, kind of like a timer in in Windows Forms where if a certain interval has passed then call the update and if a certain interval has passed call the draw function right so in uh, universal application um, it's called is that is not called a timer it's called a dispatch timer <laughs> Instead, but I'm gonna make this private because I don't want anything to access this. So this patch, okay, looks like I need a namespace, and I think that is in Windows UI XAML. Okay, let's see if it's in there. there yeah, it's in there. So this is for this patch timer. Okay. So dispatch timer, I'm gonna call this the update timer. Like that. Now for now we have a dispatch timer, a total app time, a last update time, and last draw time. Alright. So let's create the update timer inside the constructor of the game timer. Excuse me. So Update timer equals new dispatch timer. Like that, and we have to uh, give it a uh, interval that we want to um, to update, right? So update interval like this, and this is a time span uh, value. So how many seconds it needs to pass for it, the event to uh, fire? So for now, from milliseconds, 1,000 divided by 60. And what the, if you think about it, 1,000 milliseconds is one second divided by 60. That means I want the interval to, to happen 60 times a second. So this is 60 updates per second. And of course, right now you have to hook up the event that it fires in that time. So let's do that and it's kind of funkily named but it's called tick so each tick do this function and each tick is well one out of 60 seconds so 60 frames 60 times a second call the update uh, timer tick that's it so of course in the update timer we're gonna call uh, the scene update right yeah so let's get a, that every tick call the current scene update so first we check to see if it's not null then we call update and it needs a delta time span right need a delta a dt and we don't know the dt yet because um, we didn't keep track of the difference in time but we know that the last there's a last update time so the delta time will be what time is currently now minus the last time we update, right? So in the constructor, I would set last update time equal to date time now. So when this gets created, last update time will be uh, exactly when the object gets created. And you can also set the draw time here as well because we can assume that from the start it has updated once in, in the logic it has updated and drawn once uh, at the current time now okay so let's calculate the delta time between the last time it's updated and then when the update tick has called right time span
let's call this dt of course for delta time equals date time now so take the current time minus the last time we call update so we have a nice delta time now now of course now we have to update the last time update to the current time so the next time it goes around it gets a different uh, delta t right compute the delta time update the last time uh, last time the program has updated to now okay so the next time we go around it always has a delta t that is the difference between the last time it has called okay now if you look back here we need something keep on mm, adding in the total app time so each time this gets called we want to add in well the delta t as well so in total app time we will set that to zero so from milliseconds zero <laughs> so zero milliseconds now update the total app time and total app time will just equal dt right plus equal so you keep on adding the delta times and then you have a uh, each time you look at this variable, you'll have the total amount of milliseconds or, or seconds that has ran. Okay. <clears throat> There's a special case such that what happens is what happened if um, the time it takes to do an update, uh, this code might get bigger in the future. It's actually longer than the time it takes to call another update tick. So this function here takes way longer than uh, wherever a thousand divided by 60 is. It's like 16 milliseconds. Well, we don't want to call this uh, tick thing again, right? Because we don't want two updates to happen at the same time. And Usually that only happens if your program gets incredibly huge such that the update uh, timer uh, logic just is just too intense. So we have to make sure that only one update tick happens uh, at any given moment in time. So we're just going to have a flag for that, okay? So I just call it is updating just to make it simple. And of course it's false. Now when the tick happens, you just check to see if it's updating like this. You only want to do this uh, logic if if it's currently not updating. So if not updating, then do this, right? But inside the loop, you want to change the flag to true at the very beginning. So this w that means that the next time it goes around, it doesn't uh, get into this loop if it's already running. And at the end, you set it to is updating equals false. So then that what will happen is only one update uh, it's, uh, can never be called. Well, if it, if it gets called again, that means that this inside function here uh, would not be run twice. So it just immediately exit out. And this still works because the delta time will be still be a difference between um, last time it has updated and the date time now that it's been uh, currently been called. So even if it takes too long, this calculation is correct, this calculation is correct, and this calculation is correct. Okay. So if the current scene is not equal to null, we call update on that. And we pass it the delta time that we calculated, which is dt. Okay. Now, if um, the next thing to do is, of course, draw the screen, and a uh, lot of lot lot of people would update. Uh, I mean, draw the screen after every update, and I know, I don't think that's a a good idea. Um, I like to update when I in a certain fixed time so that could be happen there's a, there's multiple times when 
update it's called several times in a row before a, a draw because the update loop um, update logic is supposed to be run extremely fast the draw logic probably I don't know like 30 frames a second is a good idea so it actually runs tw you know at max twice as twice as slow as, as this so we have to keep the time of um, the last time it has drawn which we did right here and then we have to keep a running total of um, the time that has passed since it's drawn okay so we will keep a, a variable for that you can do this just with a couple of um, for loops and stuff like that but I don't I don't like that 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 much okay so, so let's go with a FPS a FPS target is basically a time span between draws that we got to we want to meet so time span time between draw right and in the constructor we can set that just like we did the interval here so if we want 60 updates a second it's 1000 divided by 60 and for now let's go time between draw is equal to time span from milliseconds let's go 30 frames a second So we're going to try to update 60 times a second, and we're going to try to draw, uh, refresh the screen 30 times a second. And it would be nice to put this as, I don't know, like a a parameter that has a default value, so you can create any FPS you like. Okay. Okay. Now we gotta check to see if the last time is drawn, um, it's greater than the time between draw, right? Just like we did um, uh, when we calculate the delta t. So figure out if we need to draw, refresh the screen. So. So the delta time draw is equal to date time now minus last time it has drawn. Like that. So this will get the delta time between the last time it has drawn. Now we want to check that milliseconds, right? It's greater than the time between draw. And you can do it with like this as well, but it's most likely not gonna matter that much. Oops, sorry. What the heck am I doing? Oh, there it is time span, time between draw. If the delta time uh, between, I mean, d the difference in time between draw is greater than our FPS. So enough time has passed, then we will need to call call refresh, right? And what do we refresh? Well, we refresh the canvas control we made in episode one. And there it is right here, this canvas control in episode one is still there. And if you remember right, in the create resource thing, we actually refresh it by calling a function called invalidate. And what invalidate would do is call the draw function out here. And we need to do the exact same thing as well. So, but the invalidate wants a canvas control. So we have to pass a canvas control to the game timer. So let's do that. Back to game timer. And then, of course, public canvas control, which I need a namespace for. So let's add that in Microsoft Graphics Canvas. 
This is canvas control win 2D. Okay. This is dispatch timer. Okay, so let's create the canvas control. And we'll just call it parent canvas. Alright. There we go. So um, to use the game timer, you have to create it and give it a canvas control. So let's put this as a the argument as well. And the default is course null. So there we set the canvas control and I would like this uh, to be a parameter as well so updates way more important than your frame rate so updates per second equals 60 and there we go so looks really nice now number when you uh, want to invalidate you also need to check I'll invalidate on it and what hap what should happen is if enough time has passed it should call the update and it should call the invalidate so we're gonna break it here and we're gonna break it here okay. now we have to reset the t uh, last time it has drawn uh, after it drawn so you so the next loop through it doesn't use the exact same thing. So last time equals date time now. So when you draw it, uh, then of course you have to update the last time has drawn to the current time. That's basically what it happens. So let's run it by creating the game loop. We're not gonna refresh this anymore here. We're going to create the game loop after every single image has loaded. Game timer GT equals new game timer. It will give it the center as the surface. 60 updates per second, 30 frames per second. And to, to start it, you can go like this. Hmm. Let's go back to game timer because I want to actually start it inside um, this so after I create the uh, create everything then I want to start it so everything is loaded start the tick and then each tick do this function okay so go here and I want to break it here and here. So what will happen, uh, what I would expect me is it will break here first, create the game timer, and the game timer runs. It should break inside the game timer, call the update function, and then call the draw function. So let's give that a try. It calls the draw function, calls the game timer function. Okay, create the game timer. There we go. It go calls the update tick because enough time has passed. It will call update here and then it will call parent canvas invalidate. So we should uh, expect it to break at the, the, at the draw function next. And it's not happening. So we're going to See what's going on. Hmm. Okay, if it calls, it calls, it calls. Hmm. 
So what happened? Why is it that it didn't like it went out that breakpoint there? Let's see. Oh, I see because it's. So it's stuck in the dispatch timer and it hasn't had enough time to actually call this. Okay. Okay, there we go. So every 60 seconds, call this 30 times a second. So what we have is we have this drawing. This is actually refreshing 30 times a second now, but we don't see it because the thing doesn't move, right? So let's give it some motion to prove that the game timer is actually working. So in our generic item right here because if you never write the update timer calls the scene update right here generic scene update which then in turn call update on every item inside the scene but for now we'll just uh, go into the generic item and move it down by one so Each time it has called the update function, move the current location down by whatever it is plus one. So what we should see is that Cairnier just moves straight down. Let's give it a try by pressing F5. And there it goes, it's moving straight down. So this is a very important concept. Please watch this episode twice to get what I'm, I'm trying to convey in the episode. So when you think about it, this is actually a very simple thing we can do in the update loop. Um, but once our program gets larger and larger, we can actually have uh, each object have its own velocity, its own direction. And you, what you'll see is you'll see the, the game, uh, that top-down shooter that I show at the beginning of the, the video. Because each there's 10,000 ob objects in that scene. And each of those guys have a different velocity, different direction, and they're moving um, to their destination. So, and it's basically the exact same thing here. This game timer is no different than the game timer I'm using for that project. Um, but in the generic item, I have a different update for each of those objects. So this is a cheesy um, test to see if the update loop is working and it, it does because the object does move down. Now you can move it diagonally by just plusing one to the X as well. Let's see this in action. And there it is. So but uh, if we have a velocity per second then you can figure out where the next position to be because you have a delta T. So let's say if it moves 10 pixels to the right every one second, right? and only half a second has passed because the delta t is half a second well you just want to move well 0 0.05 times 10 equals 5 so you only move it 5 um, to the right each time um, the update has been called now this will change every single update because the the delta t is not going to be fixed um, it's just going to be called as fast as it can so the next time it called can be 0 0.6 seconds 0 0.7 seconds and you want to move the object accordingly to its velocity so you have this very nice physics simulation All right so watch this episode again and if you get lost uh, go watch episode 1 to 5 again and, and hopefully it will be clear this project will be on OneDrive as well if you like the video click on the like button and subscribe to me okay so in episode 6 we'll introduce the last concept before making um, making a simple game as possible and that's of course getting input from the user. We'll introduce how to get keyboard strokes and how to get mouse input and if when you combine mouse put I mean user input with the game loop with the generic scene and generic items then you can make a simple game and sometimes even more advanced game. Now I will show you what I'm currently working on for episode 6 Let's see if I can load that up. Yeah. As, as you can see, this once it's loaded up, I have your game timer right here. It's the exact same thing, what with comments, of course. 
and the input manager is what I'm going to do next in episode 6. So when you have all this together, when you think about it, you can create a Minesweeper game if you don't know what Minesweeper is. So in episode 1, if you look at the screen here, we learn how to draw rectangles. Look, rectangle, 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 rectangle. We learn how to draw text. There's text in each one of those. And look, look, look at this timer here. It keeps going and going, counting the number of seconds that the app just ran. And we just made that, which is called total app time, right? And this is the bomb image. You learn how to uh, draw a image in episode two. And all these are just rectangles, episode one. And then if I click around the box, you'll see that if you play Minesweeper, see if I can get a good setup here, that it's just boxes and numbers, which is episode one, of course. And then you play Minesweeper like this. So each of the boxes with the numbers and it dictates how many bombs in a nine square radius around the bomb is. So it's a little bit math, but uh, it's quite addicting if you like these type of games. So, so in the next episode, we'll get user input from the mouse or the keyboard, and this is what I'm doing here. You move the mouse around, and the 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 box that is covering hovering above will light up like that. And then when you click on something, it you know, it tags the box. Look at that. So when you combine all of them together, you get something like this. Alright? I'll see you next time. Thank you.